Hello students, welcome to La Excellence. Welcome to the session on 79th weekly magazine where we will be covering from 27th August to 2nd September 2018. It's very very important for us to start reading these issues carefully for both prelims and mains next year. So people who are preparing seriously for next year try to ensure that basic material or basic concepts which we are going to deal here, you are working on them. See guys, every day in the newspaper, whatever is important and the background to that is discussed. But you are also aware that whenever you read newspaper every day, there are many political issues including Rafael deal. So, most of the people, they worry about the specificities, technical details of Rafael deal and all. But you are also aware that UPSC will never ask you any controversial questions of that sort. UPSC's focus will be on those areas related to it where you may get some questions about some defense equipments. Augusta, Westland, many things are there. UPSC has never touched or entered into the controversial stuff. Maybe UPSC will ask you how exactly you can improve transparency. So write some measures rather than asking about the controversy as such. So my request to you is every day whatever you are reading the articles and all that should be fine to understand what is going on in the newspaper. But remember UPSC has never asked you any question which is not relevant over a period of time and which is more controversial. So, weekly when you are observing these videos, the focus of this will be to highlight and discuss only those news that are important for you. Earlier, I used to do everything because you were not following the newspaper regularly. But now, the prelims based facts and others, whenever it comes, I will highlight them. And also, I will try to explain the core concepts that you need to understand when it comes to this. And there are few videos which we have not released in between due to some technical problems, we could not get it on time. Over a period of time, I will cover every magazine that is present. And there were few students who were asking for these magazines. You can please visit likes.in slash test prep and you will get all those videos and also the magazines that are required. Is this fine? So guys, let's quickly get into those issues which are important in this particular week. Kerala floods is one issue which is never going to stop at least for next four to five months. Mainly because even though the impact has ended, you will see certain news about certain people suffering due to this particular case. You never know among these who will be important for you. Southwest monsoons had created huge deluge in most of the west flowing rivers. So my request to you, please try to read about the west flowing rivers. And almost all the districts of Kerala were affected. So please try to read about the districts of Kerala ones. Once these two are done, Try to see the difference between the cyclones impact in east coast and monsoon impact in the west coast. They might not have asked any question this year, high possibility they may ask you next year. Please be careful. And here in this particular article, what is important for us is about the Chola Nikons who is a tribal community present in Ghats of Kerala, mountainous region of Kerala. 
and these people are moving out of the mountainous region and they are going to the plains because of lack of availability of resources, lack of infrastructure, no movement of people or goods to these regions have made them to move towards this particular area. High possibility UPSC may ask you a prelims based question about the tribal community itself. Sometimes whenever tribes are in news, please try to read rather than remembering some 700 to 800 tribes which are present in different parts of India, whether they are under scheduled tribe or not. The next important point about the multi-purpose dam project in Dehradun over Yamuna river is about the Lakhwar multi-purpose project. Now here I want you to know a very very important thing that is one side Kerala is in floods because of dams. Second, the world is thinking of stopping constructing more dams especially in the developed world. Whereas India is still focusing on construction of dams especially in ecologically sensitive areas like Uttarakhand mainly because development of most of the regions are dependent upon the power availability. And remember in geography you will be reading wherever there is enough power supply there is high possibility that almost all the industries will come and start establishing in that particular region. One of the main reason for regional imbalances over Availability of power, availability of resources and most importantly why industries are located only in specific areas are due to the above factors that we spoke that is either power, capital, raw materials all this comes into picture. So my request to you is please try to ensure that a question can be asked about the benefits of a dam problems of a dam, we have already discussed problems of the dam, when they talk about benefits of a hydroelectric power project, one is agriculture where irrigational uses will be seen, second important thing is industries will be located closer to hydroelectric power projects, whether it may be Damodar Valley Corporation or Hirakud Dam, Sharavati, anywhere, wherever the electricity is available. It is closer to these regions industries come up. Overall economic development of a region depends upon the availability of power. So from these points of view, it's very very important for you to know about this particular project as well. From geography, what is important is the place. Lakhwar multi-purpose project. Here I want you to know that central government is almost funding 90% of the projects and the states through which it passes that is Uttarakhand, Uttar Pradesh, Himachal Pradesh, Rajasthan, Haryana and Delhi, right? It is these states contribute 10% and the project is aimed at constructing near Dehradun, right? And if you look at the project details, the project will generate 300 megawatt of power it will help 33,780 hectare irrigation potential and that would become the command area of that region as well. Uttarakhand will bear the cost of power component, get the total benefit of power generation that is whatever power is generated that will go to Uttara, sorry, that will go to Uttarakhand. And it is very, very important because Uttarakhand is one of the least developed states mainly because of lack of availability. And if you see Bhutan and Nepal which claim that they have huge potential in hydroelectric power generation, even Uttarakhand and Sikkim can be. And as I told you, center is going to fund at least 90% sorry, and remaining 10% is by the states. The next important issue which can be asked definitely is about the legislative council which is about to come in Odisha. Here I want you to know that 
similar to parliament where you have rajya sabha and lok sabha even within the states you can have legislative councils and legislative assemblies legislative assemblies are present in almost all the states and it should be there union territories few are exception but when it comes to legislative council the state government has to pass a bill and it has to send to the central government and if central government also accepts it then you will have a legislative council which will be set up in that particular state and the procedure is different so we will see the procedure everything here now the benefit of this is this would help several people to enter into the legislative assembly indirectly that is if they want to become ministers and all then they can get an alternative route similar to rajya sabha rajya sabha elections is different from the legislative council elections we will see each one of this now which is the state which is planning to go for this it is odisha so they may ask you anything with respect to this now this is elected by local bodies legislative assembly members right graduates teachers etc and members are known as mlcs and their period is for 6 years and every 2 years after that people will keep on retiring right so it is a permanent house similar to rajya sabha and if you look mlc must be a citizen of india at least 30 years old mentally should be sound not an insolvent and on the voter list of the state for which he or she is contesting an election very very important yeah there is a procedure to choose the people one third are elected by members of the local bodies especially municipalities gram sabhas gram panchayats panchayat samitis and zilla parishad one third are elected by members of legislative assemblies of the state from among the persons who are not members of the assembly i told you right they will vote one third from the panchayats and all one sixth are nominated by the governor from persons having knowledge or practical experience which is similar to the nominated members present in the rajya sabha and then One twelfth persons are elected who are graduates of at least three years. One twelfth are elected by persons engaged for at least three years in teaching in educational institutions. Teachers and all comes into picture. Graduates and teachers. And the states where legislative councils are already present: Andhra Pradesh, Bihar, Jammu and Kashmir, Karnataka, Maharashtra, Telangana, and Uttar Pradesh. In most of the books, Telangana will not be there because it is also recent one. right so guys this is very very important for us please try to read in lakshmikant about the vidhan parishad how it is formed and all the next important issue that we need to focus is about easing tensions between united states of america and mexico here i want you to know there is something called as north american free trade agreement which was in between canada us and mexico and according to this goods and people can move after taking permission remember after taking permission us is opposing this mainly because now there is lot of illegal migration taking place right and not about the legal migration next important thing is nafta actually helps in selling american goods in canada and united mexico now due to trumps adamant thing that he wants to construct a wall and stop illegal mexicans entering mexico is also having wage of war or they are also saying that they are not interested to be part of this so this fight between us and mexico has led to there may be collapse of nafta in future this is what people are predicting until and unless it occurs don't worry about this but as of now nafta has the countries canada us and mexico that should be enough fine upsc will not ask you because india is nowhere concerned and india do not have free trade agreement with nafta as well the next regional organization which is very very important for india is about the bimstec 
And BIMSTEC, when I say I have already told you, it is Bangladesh, India, Myanmar, Sri Lanka, Thailand, Nepal and Bhutan. And here we are talking about the connectivity project among all these countries. And I told you Bank of Declaration actually led to the formation of BIMSTEC. And many people argue that BIMSTEC was formed to counter SARC. In SARC you have Pakistan. India and Pakistan issue was more highlighted in SARC rather than talking about other issues. This led to a lot of problem in SARC. So they thought that alternative to this that is BIMSTEC may succeed. But today Nepal has said that it is not very much happy because most of the things in BIMSTEC are not under its control. And many people say that they are being closer to China and China is making Nepal to speak in this tune. And it is clear that India has not requested Nepal in certain aspects when it comes to BIMSTEC. So they expect India to formally ask before confirming about Nepal's agreement with other countries. So here no need to enter into these many controversies. We need to know about BIMSTEC which are the countries which are part of it. Will it be successful? Definitely if the connectivity project will be developed. Prime Minister has said that the funds will be released to ensure that the connectivity project among all these countries will be taken care at least till Thailand. And if this works, then our Northeast will be benefited. So two things you have to understand. One, for Northeast connectivity and development, BIMSTEC is very, very important. And also to our Act East policy, BIMSTEC will be very, very helpful. Fine. From these two aspects, please try to understand this. And whenever they talk about the SARC, alternative to SARC, BIMSTEC is very good. And if you ask me what are all the issues they would talk, one will be about climate change, another one will be about terrorism, third will be about trade, fourth will be about connectivity projects. So guys, these will be always there in almost all the regional organizations. So no need to read what is the actual content, fine. The next important issue which you may use in science and technology or for that matter you can definitely use when it comes to international relations and also science and technology is about the innovation cell which Ministry of HRD is planning. Here I want you to know being a developing country India is spending very less money in research and development. As the money reduces, investment in research and development reduces, the progress of the economy will also reduce. So it's very, very important for us to ensure that India will focus on innovation and this has to be done at the higher educational institutions mandatorily. At least at the master's level, most of the people, if they can work on the problems which India is facing that should be more than enough. In almost every problem, especially associated with geography, we say investment in R&D is very, very important and that to promote it, you have HRD ministry focusing on this. We basically try to say lab should be connected to land, but before that colleges has to be connected to the lab. So that is the lab facilities has to be present in every colleges. The next issue that is very, very important for us is about Island Development Agency. Remember, we have hill area development, island area development, command area development, watershed development. All these were projects aimed at demarcating India geographically and try to provide all the facilities that are required for its overall development. But most importantly, you should know its objectives and all. It is basically chaired by Home Minister and its aim is for holistic development means all round development, whether it is social, political, economic, cultural, everything comes into picture. Now, what should be the main focus? Whenever we talk about islands, the sustainability, sustainable development is very, very important. Community participation is important and also preservation of the ecosystem is very, very important. 
Now let me tell you what are the objectives. Can you see first important thing is ecosystem. Most of the islands they are rich in ecosystems or biological diversity that needs to be protected. Second, the conditions of the communities there have to be developed by providing them skills, insurance, right, banking facilities, whatever you say has to be provided to them, education, health, everything. To survey, plan and prepare the project proposal for all round development in and around the islands and also ensure that permission is taken from the panchayats or municipalities which are present in that region as well. To promote long term multidimensionary research, I told you everywhere research is very very important today. Prepare environment status reports so that there won't be any question about like you know spoiling the environment and establish research institutions. To work on sustainable fishery resource development and conservation of biodiversity. To carry out eco restoration of islands which includes improving habitat of birds. Some of the birds have stopped coming and also whichever are coming are being hunted down. So ensure that protection of that is occurred and one of the most important economy for the islands are tourism and this can definitely promote it. Right guys, so island development agency both important for GS and geography optional. Please try to see this once, fine. The next important issue that we need to focus is about the new helicopters which are being procured. We are mostly interested in this because of Make in India project. Here if you see the strategic partnership model which our companies are looking for with the foreign defense manufacturers so that they get the technology management skills funds that are required to produce it domestically over a period of time with their skills they can expand it in other areas as well. So if you look at the salient features the strategic partnership policy is intended to promote Indian private sector partnership in the defense manufacturing. Already you are seeing about the Rafale deal where offset is being talked, sorry, where offset is being spoken about. Here we should be aware that the Indian companies are tying up with the foreign entities to produce weapons in India and then only India will be giving orders to them. And this would ensure that if once a industry is being set up and investments are made, they will produce more from India to other countries as well. And if they are willing, we may help them to sell to other countries like Africa, South Asian countries or ASEAN countries as well. In economy, there is a terminology which we all have to focus that is about the share buyback. Here I want you to know, whenever we talk about the shares, first, so let me say there is a company A and it needs some funds. So it has released certain shares and the people purchase these shares from the company and money went to the company and company used this to purchase some equipments, buildings, land or something. Okay. So these are basically known as primary. Now what happens? People they won't keep the share but they will sell to another people other people they and they keep selling to others. Now between people whenever trade occurs we call them as secondary share market. Primary share market, secondary share market. Is this fine? Now share buyback means what? Company has given shares to the people now it wants to buy back. Why? The reason is company has more money now. It doesn't require any money. So it will purchase the shares. Second, a company if it has 51 percent then only it will have the power to take any decision. Sometimes due to some reasons the share may be reducing. So to increase their share like you know if they are 51 now they will increase to 55 or 60 so that like you know the company will be always stronger for that they do. Third, whenever the demand for rates of the share, for example, let's take if there is one lakh share of a company, 
demand is less. Let me say they will purchase 10,000 and 90,000 is there in the market. So demand for 90,000 increases. This is an artificial way to increase the share value. Share value is determined by the amount of shares that are available and the demand for that particular thing. Companies try to do this. Everyone will be knowing about how, why we distribute because they need money. Now why are they taking back? They have money or they also aim to increase the share value. So this you have to know with respect to economy. The next very very important issue from mains and prelims point of view is about biofuel. For the first time India has its own biofuel flight spice jet right along with nations like US and Australia it is India which is able to use biofuel for aircraft once if it becomes successful then we may go for alternative fuel because Jetropa is a plant which can be grown right and as and when you can grow how much ever you want then your dependency on this non-renewable energy resource will reduce and you can go for renewable energy resource. But the biggest challenge is if they start taking the land then there will be curse on the land available for agricultural activities. So that needs to be prevented. The next important issue is about Horizon 2020 where European Union and India are coming together in research and innovation for developing vaccine for influenza which will help protect the people worldwide. Horizon 2020 is biggest EU research and innovation program ever with nearly 80 billion euros of funding available over seven years and it tries to eliminate some of the major diseases which are being affected in the developing countries. Right? The goal is to ensure Europe produces world class science, remove barriers to innovation and makes it easier for public and private sectors to work together. He is open to everyone with simple structure that reduces red tape that is bureaucratic things and all will be reduced. And this will help both the departments to come together and find medicines which will help in reducing some of the diseases which are due to improper availability of sanitation and India is moving ahead in removing these through preventive measures where sanitation facilities are provided over a period of time when people start using these diseases may be reduced but to also ensure that people who have already got the diseases or after once they have got how exactly we need to prevent it is also done through this. China and Russia are coming together for a military exercise OSTEC 2018. Up to you. If you want to remember, you can. High possibility they won't ask you the question. The very next important issue that we need to focus is about the China releasing excess water into Arunachal Pradesh. I was telling you dams have become one of the major threat where China is planning to construct dams and whenever there is excess water, they release it without information. And whenever the water is released without information, then people who are staying in the low-lying areas will be most affected. Remember, whenever you have a mountain and a valley or a plain, there will be very less people present on the mountain and more people will be present in the valley. That is, density will be more always in the valley. And these are low-lying areas. Whenever you release more water, they actually affect the low-lying areas. So this is a geographical understanding where you need to be aware that whenever you release dam water, it will affect high-density population, mainly because they enter into the low-lying areas where population will be actually more. The next important issue is about the Cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs has given approval to O-Smart, that is Ocean Services, Technology, Observation, Resource Modeling and Science. And basically it is associated with the ocean, that is to help people who are present near the coastal region to do fishing or any industry, resources, mining, anything which comes into picture will be used here to ensure that there will be enough resources and technology available to extract the minerals. 
total 16 sub projects addressing ocean development activities such as services, technology, resources, observation, science, etc. Right? Rendered under OSMART will provide economic benefits to a number of user communities in coastal and ocean sectors. Significance and benefits of the scheme, currently 5 lakh fishermen community are receiving the related information daily through mobile which includes allocation of food, fish potential and local weather conditions. For example, if there is a cyclone, if there is swells, swell waves and all. So there is going to be swell waves, don't go to the ocean today. This type of information is also available. So guys, the most important thing is to ensure that information is made available to the coastal community to ensure that fishing and all other activities closer to that can be done. I'm repeating again and again to ensure that you will recollect it in the exam. And it also helps in achieving the Sustainable Development Goal 14, where it aims at using ocean resources through maintaining the environment and ecology of it. Marine resources for sustainable development, all this comes into picture. The ocean advisory services and technologies being rendered and developed under the scheme and to play a very important role in some of the areas which will benefit the economy of the coastal states. As I keep telling you, it is again one and the same. It talks about the tidal surges, that is like, you know, tidal waves which come very quickly, swell waves, tsunamis or anything which is going to affect the population. One is for disaster, economy, fishing, right, minerals, exploration and also industries and navigation. All this comes into picture. The five things if you can cover, right, what are they? One is about the geological features like what we call about the tsunamis, right, wave surges, tides which is affecting. At the same time, if you can think about the economy, coastal people, right, agriculture, if you're talking about the rainfall pattern, all this will be provided to the people present in this region. And the last issue which is very, very important from environment and ecology point of view is about the brown antlered deer. Here you see, the brown antlered deer is found in Kaibulam Javo National Park in Manipur. Please remember, it is a floating national park. It is largely seen over floating biomass called as Fumdi in the southeastern part of Loktak Lake inside the park. Very, very important. The park covers an area of 40 square kilometer and the home range of deer in the park is confined to 15 to 20 square kilometers. Fumdi is the most important and unique part of Sangai's habitat. I'm just giving you the facts with respect to this. Any point here can be asked in prelims, so please remember each fact. It is the floating mass of entangled vegetation formed by the accumulation of organic debris and biomass with soil. It floats with four to five part under water. It is endangered list of IUCN. Very, very important factual data. Please try to see. At last, I would request you to see the mains ethics based question. What is the meaning of nationalism and what are the views of Gandhiji and Tagore on nationalism. See guys, if you have any doubts or anything, you can contact us in the number given below. Those people who are planning to join geography optional, we are having another batch in November. And if you are planning to take online also, it is available. Both online and offline is available. You can see this. International relations and internal security videos are also available. You can watch them as well. Thank you guys. Thanks for watching.